expecting thunder and lightning very shortly. So I ran out to get some uh, vegetables for today, for meals. And um, it's the, well, it's the 1st of August, but as the end of July, I just thought I'd show you where the garden is. Um, I'll go to all the beds, I guess. And you may actually hear whales going poof, poof, because <laughs> they're having a ball. We think it's the codfish is really coming back or the capelin may be still here, but I think we're into the codfish now. But they're just incredible. We've really never had them hang around quite so much, so uh, I wish I could show you them, but I can't. But I will show you my garden. Oh, but first I had some visitors who brought me a lovely gift. Hello. Hello. I just got some gifts. Want to show me the gift you give me? Hey, let's lift it up. Gorgeous. From your own hens, right? Yeah. <laughs> what puddles are for. Get me. Oh, I got gotcha. no. you. <laughs> Who knew puddles were so much fun? <laughs> so what a nice surprise. I'm thrilled. Now back to the garden. This is um, a cold frame, but um, I put corn in there. It does not look healthy, does it? I think it's supposed to be a nice dark green and instead it's a pale green and the bottom ones are yellow. Slugs are also enjoying the leaves, which is interesting. This is, I did a little vid a while back about trying sweet potatoes. Now the plants I put out, it was horribly cold after I did it. I mean for weeks and weeks. So I thought well that's a done deal. But they survived in there and then have come up. Not going to get sweet potatoes of a size, but what if I even get little ones? Kind of an experiment. That's a ground cherry in the middle. But yeah, my corn's not looking healthy. This is just a bag that I put um, potatoes in in a pot that I put potatoes in. And can you see up there? Let's see. Right there in the middle is Jerusalem artichokes. But I'm not going to crawl up there because I'll probably fall. Starting to get peas now. They're coming along. I've been picking a few. These are the lovely purple pods, so they're not um, bulking up yet. But they were great and sweet. Really enjoyed those ones. Anywho, back to this one. I've got mixed in here some sunflowers. One, two, three, four. Oh, I've got a lot of them. Here's some broad beans. I've been picking those also because some are further along just to help the plant. Um, they're doing okay. Um, I don't know that I think there's a lot. The ones at the bottom, they got pollinated and everything else, but I think again the mice might have got some of them, but they're starting to come, so I should get certainly enough for Bruce and I to pack away. Um, I have some parsnips here. I, oh dear. I still have some Milan turnips to get out. Just a couple that I left because I didn't know what to do with all the ones I was harvesting. Trying to separate them. I've got carrots, beets, uh, Swiss chard, parsnips. Yeah, that's all there. Some, and I, I guess I was doing a line of parsnips here some form of squash. I cannot tell you the squash because 
varieties because I do not know them. It's a wonderful surprise when they come up. The reason that is, just to explain, um, I put squash out and they either survive or are eaten by slugs or whatnot and I just then go around the garden with seeds every now and then and stick them in, overplant, yada yada yada, um, but I couldn't tell you what's what. So some carrots are coming along, it's good because I really need carrots. This looks like a broccoli. The mouse took out seven uh, between broccoli and cabbage plants uh, in, I think it was one night, could have been two. Let's see, we've got some nice looking parsnips coming up here. This looks like, um, I'm not sure what that looks like. I think that might be a savoy cabbage. I've got a pepper plant. I've only harvested one from this. It's a hot wax, but they're coming. Uh, this is a nice squash coming along. And he's just starting, I think, down there. No, I'm not sure. Yeah. To put out little tiny, tiny females. There's obviously some Swiss chard. I'll pick that today. Give it some life. And in between there, of course, as I overcrowd. But these things will come out. So even though it looks really crowded right now, uh, they protect each other from wind and things. And But that's a ground cherry there. Here's a Brussels sprout. Um, it's been okay. We've gotten a few wormies. Um, and if you're Brussels sprouts, by the way, don't be scared that the bottom leaves go yellow. That's the Brussels sprout telling itself I don't need this leaf anymore. Just pull them off. This is dill, I guess. And uh, yeah, so that's that bed. Got a little bucket of carrots. I'm hoping to take those indoors as the uh, weather gets colder. Strawberries, strawberries, strawberries. We've so enjoyed our strawberries. I'm over the moon about them. But now it's a race between me and the slugs. I realize there's another culprit also who scoops them out so clean. The sow bug. Yeah. That's special. <laughs> this bed has some salad and some succession salad, which I had to do because again, they were wiped out either by slugs or... <sighs> but anyway, a little... I think that's a tiny Tim tomato that I... I didn't want to plant inside, I was getting bugs inside and it was driving me crazy, so I put anything outside. Um, here's a tiny wee fellow. Hello there, you're going for a flight. There we go. Oh dear, my goodness, that's uh, way too big. They get bitter. I don't know about you guys, but um, there's only so much you can do with a turnip, although they're great fun to grow because they come up so easily and quickly. But... Um, yeah, I only eat so many of them. I'm pleased. We've got so many little flowers there. Uh, I think that's a butternut. I do think I know that one. Celery, there's celery everywhere. And there's a little weed. Um, bunching onions, time for those to all come out. They look crowded again, but they're coming out. I know that they... I use them as my precursor to my other uh, onions. Uh, I love bunching onions, actually. I've let a couple of mizuna go to seed. I've got some, looks like romaine lettuce here. I've been cutting from much of my lettuce, what I can get. I've also been cutting from my celery, actually. Doesn't matter the size, they're all good. I've got, this I know is a patty pan. Anytime I stick a seed in the center, it's usually of the zucchini variety. This is a um, Patterson patty pan. This one, I don't know what it is, <laughs> but it would be a zucchini. And this is Swiss chard, the red and the green. Love, this is the Silverado. Absolutely my favorite Swiss chard. And again, we eat so much of it. So I'm gonna pick some of that today too. Here's another squash. That would not be a zucchini because I've got them on the side. 
but I'm not sure what he is. I've also got some little onions in here. Um, I'm not sure what they're. Oh, I guess it's just a green onion. That's probably the red baron, I think it's called. And I have in here, these are, I guess they should come out. Let me see if I can show you. Those little pickling onions, I've got a few of those in there. They're sort of scattered, maybe I should find them. Oh, there's a slug. Someone's going for a ride. See ya, wouldn't want to be ya. Um, I jumped down to this bed, but this is potatoes. This is a mix of mine, saved from last year on this half of the bed. Can you see where I am? Okay, this half of the bed. And this half, I can never remember the name of them. Anyways, it's a later one. Oh my goodness, the typical potato, but I can't remember the name. Uh, jumping up here, I have a sad, sad looking cucumber. If you've followed me, you know I cannot grow cucumbers. And that's how sad it looks. I have one even worse than that, which I'll show you. I, for some reason, have a rogue parsnip over here. The wind must have blown the seed. But I, I was... Um, it's, it's actually quite large, so I might pull that someday. Soon to eat. Another little squash here. My light's not that great, it's getting so dark. Uh, Brussels sprouts, beets, 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 beets. Some Swiss chard there, another beet, a carrot. This would be, I'm thinking of broccoli, just heard the whale always oh, right in front of me. Oh, I wish I could show you. This is getting eaten. This is getting eaten. I haven't been that bothered by the little green worms. Oh my goodness. The whales are really making noises out there. My very poor attempt at a close-up. This, um... Yeah, I think it's a savoy cabbage also. And parsnip. There's a pepper plant in there. I don't even think I knew that was there. And... Just carrots and dill again. Here's the ground cherry. Let me see if they've got any. Yep. Can you see that? So there's the ground cherries. First time growing. So I'm looking forward to seeing what I get from those. This is not a beet. This is... It looks like rainbow chard, maybe. I don't know. And lots of celery. And a row of carrots and uh, cabbage, maybe? No, that may be collards. I'm really enjoying the collards. I don't cook them down like uh, like in southern cooking, but I love them in stir fries. Some more broad beans here. So I've got three ends of beds with the broad beans. Two more little buckets of carrots. I'm on the other side here, so yeah. Um, I'll pick a few more broad beans just to keep them going. Some more bunching onions. I'll pull those. And uh, that's the yellow beets. Bulgar beet. Uh, carrots, some leeks. Savoy cabbage, again getting eaten. Ooh. Goodbye, little dude. Goodbye. Yeah, getting eaten for sure. Okay. He's no more. Sorry. And this is nice. Um, don't know what it is, but we can't wait to see. But look at the males on there. I just hope that there's... Or females, I mean. I just hope there's male flowers. I don't see any. They're, they all won't make it if, uh, if not. Because there's so many of these, I'm thinking it might be like a, again, a, a round zucchini, maybe. But I don't think I would have put it on the edge. Anyway, more ground cherries. And uh, there they are. More Brussels sprouts, cabbage, carrots. The same intermixing. Another squash, summer squash those would be. This is a vining squash. He's starting to move. 
Don't know what it is. This I do know what it is. This is my fur. It's the best ever. Thank you, Kelly from Kelly's Kitchen Garden, and Paul from Richard and Paul for the cheeky prints. And he's growing. I love it, but I have a problem. I have parsnips, two I think, growing, but, you know, imagine a parsnip root growing beside that. Anyway, I did left the parsnip because I assumed that this wouldn't make it, because they never do. But look at it, it's doing wonderful. Uh, yellow zucchini in there, hasn't pollinated anything yet. Some very sad looking, uh, oh, uh, tiny Tim tomato, Tom tomatoes again. So, down this one, we've got more broad beans, more red chard. Inside all this is the broad beans and carrots, and I think there's green onions in here. They'll all be fine once I put, yeah, there's a green onion. They, they, they don't suffer at all being crunched up like this. They'll be fine once I get the broad beans out. And, uh, okay. Another squash there, of unknown variety. Tomatoes, of unknown variety. I think I do know those, but I can't think of it right now. What have I got here? Uh, dill, dill, yep. Yeah. These are of the 50 devoured uh, chickpeas. They were cut off to the stems, but they've actually come up. I don't think I'll get any chickpeas, but maybe I'll see the plant anyway. And let's see, a squash or two in there. Anyways, this bed was backfilled because of the annihilation of my 50 chickpeas there. So a little bit of everything there. These are my early potatoes. Um, pulled the plant last weekend and I'm going to again this weekend uh, because there's, they need, I don't even think water's getting down in there anymore. There's so many there. But I knew that they were my early potatoes. Um, so I'll, I might pull this plant over here today because look what I found in here, the poor thing. A squash. I don't even know how it's green. It's been buried in there. But he's trying. Down this bed is more potatoes. These are a little later. They're my... Uh, Red Chief, I think. Two sets of those. And these, look, this is the worst beans I've ever grown, but it's my own fault. This would be the soil nutrients attacked by mice and slugs. But look at the color. So this is not healthy. The good thing about green beans, I absolutely despise them frozen. Cannot get them down. My husband and I cannot. <laughs> get down a frozen bean. We hate them. No matter how small I chop them up, no matter what I try to put them in, just, and I've blanched them, not blanched them, tried everything, don't like them. So whatever I get from here will be perfect for us to eat. Now I do have down at the tail end, these are Coco Sophie. I've got a couple just starting to vine up. Those I do want because I want to see if I can, if I have a long enough season to get them to, um, for storage. Leave them on the pods. All right. So now we'll go further up. Oh, this was my carrots in this little box. I had pulled out the daikon. I might have said that before. And um, they're doing well. Right by the back of the house. Um, I did this last year and it worked out beautifully, so I've done it again this year. And that's just the tiny Parisian carrots, the small little round balls. And um, I see some lettuce and turnip and another ground cherry. I have a lot of ground cherries around and that looks like some cabbage. Don't know if that's going to get anywhere. And uh, this is the flower bed, but I stick things in here. So you'll see that there's, there's a lot of celery actually in this bed and a few turnip. Actually, I think I see some beets there. Yep. Yeah. Oh, and I see some Parisian carrots there also. Black currant, which my husband and I have been taste testing, and they're so tart, bitter. Oh, I don't know what you call it. 
so they really need to ripen a little bit more, but um, they are what they are anyways. Here's my garlic. I have to tell you, I don't know if it's in my mind, but it's they're not doing as well on the outside as they did on the insides in the past years, previous years. And I think it's because the grass is encroaching and um, sucking the life out of them, to be honest. You can even see a lighter green on this side than the darker green on this side. But um, there's still plenty, so I'm not overly concerned about the size, but they'll definitely be a little bit smaller, I think. Got some sage, a ground cherry, some squash of some type, a few uh, later leeks, a few Jerusalem artichokes stuck in the corner there. Um, here's some leeks. They're coming along now actually, so that's good. Um, parsnips. This is a zucchini. You're going to think I'm crazy with so many zucchinis, but believe it or not, everyone who can grow zucchinis so well, I can't. I coat it in other places, but here they just don't work. Uh, carrots, they're coming along nicely, I think. Yeah, they're good. I just pulled out this morning here. Well, I made a mess over there. That's the uh, rapini or broccoli rab. Got a squash doing well here, actually. Um, don't know what it is. And then I've got some rogue parsnips where the seeds obviously blew into the path. So there can't be any depth to the dirt, the soil there, so they're not going to be too grand. Um, and this, I found out, this is a rogue. I thought I was eating the leaves, to be honest. You can see where I've cut them. I thought it was um, red Swiss chard, but it's a beet. I don't know if you can see. Yeah. Yep, yeah, it's a beet. Also growing in a very tough piece of soil there. And oh look, that would be fennel. I do have fennel all around by the way. I didn't show you that because it's buried under everything. So these are my onions and they're really doing well. I didn't get the greatest size last year and then I, as I like to do, I listen to growers of, so onion grower who said the trick to getting your onions big or to bulb, don't plant them too early. So I listened this year and you know what? These are the nicest. These are just stir on onions, by the way. These are no giants, but they're coming beautiful. They've got a long way to go before they fall over. But I don't know if you can see the size of these. No, you can't because I'm camera work is hideous. Get my hand, no. Okay, that's not gonna work. Anyway. They're doing grand. I'm very pleased with those. These were the runts that I stuck over from the red onions. And even they're doing wonderful. I'm really pleased with these. That's a good size. Crazy walking onions. They're now even flowering, which is really cool. I don't know much about the seeds of them, but um, I mean, because they grow from the other things. So I might even harvest those. Oh, look. A carrot. Uh, more runt onions. And let's see what I've got in here. Oh, bunching onions. They're not looking that great either, but they're all right. They'll be perfect. And some weeds. Then here is a succession planting of the broad beans. They're looking really good too. They're liking it here. They did last year also. And who knows? Walk by and stick seeds in broccoli, I think. Oh, and a couple of little, I don't know why there's squash coming up, to be honest. So that's this bed. And it's looking good for the most part, and I'm sure the garlic will be okay. It's just, we don't have garden centers here. So come October, if I don't have soil to top up with, they don't get any. And this didn't get it this year. So uh, this time round, I've done a little better. I've already ordered my sheep manures uh, arriving next week, but I failed to do that last year. So undernourished garlic, I think is what I have here. Oh, there's a little guy. 
making his climb. Where are you? Go for a fly, fly away. Thanks for sticking with this one uh, and have a great week.